Right now, I am working on a video all about Lolita guidelines and rules. I made a post on my community tab asking for any advice or must-dos that you think around Lolita fashion, Lolita guidelines. However, that video is going to be very scripted and I'm going to film it in the same style as my Concrete and my Leaving Lolita video that has a lot of different outfit changes and backgrounds, but I'm currently not at home. I am isolating away from home and if you want to know more about that and what's going on in my personal life, I have a video on Patreon about it. But because of this, I have had to push back that video and not finish it yet. But that also means that if you want to submit some things that you think are rules or guidelines around Lolita, the option is still there. I will put the email for that here. While I have been writing and preparing for that video, I've gotten a lot of great advice. But I got this one email that's really specific and it's too specific to really include in overall rules. But I wanted to address it because I think it's really interesting and I I think that a lot of Lolitas probably also have these questions. The thing about Lolita rules and guidelines is that there is no official book. There's no real Lolita Bible. There is the Gothic and Lolita Bible magazines, but they don't really list out clear specific commandments. They're more of just a fun magazine that explores the fashion. Lolita rules and guidelines come from just community culture that has grown over the years. And some of it is actually from mistranslations, which is interesting. But when it comes to Lolita rules, it really comes down to opinions. The interesting thing about Lolita rules is that you can ask one Lolita what they are, and then another Lolita may completely differ. So the way that I answer these questions today is definitely not by Lolita community standards, it's only by my own standards, which is why it's always important to not only consume my content, but consume other Lolita's content. If you go to my main YouTube page, I have a featured channels playlist as well. On my channels page, I have a bunch of other Lolita content creators, and it's good to just sort of take in what everyone thinks about it and then decide for yourself what rules you're gonna abide by and what rules you're gonna break and why you're gonna break them and to figure out your own style within Lolita and not just blindly follow exactly what I say. As always, I don't speak on behalf of the entire Lolita community, I only speak on behalf of myself and my own opinions around it. And that's what a lot of these questions are. The answers to them are just really opinions. But I hope that me exploring them and answering them may lessen some of the anxiety you have around Lolita rules. All right, so the first question is, is it okay to wear black shoes with Sweet Lolita? I'm not talking about prints in black colorways, but rather full-on pastel colors. I've seen people say that this is acceptable in old school style, and others say that it is straight up Ida, and not to do it. I actually really like this look, but don't want to come off as Ida. So an Ida is a derogative term for a Lolita who is unpolished, bad, inexperienced and there's a lot of fear in beginners with not wanting to be portrayed as an Ida or seen as an Ida. I feel like even though a lot of Lolitas talk about their Ida phase, there's always like the potential for being an Ida and it's really part of figuring out your style. I still think that even with 10 plus years of experience, there's times when I try out outfits and I'm like, Ugh, no, <laughs> that's Ida, that's bad. But I wouldn't really know until I tried it. So I really want to just express that you shouldn't have fear around being a potential Ida because it's not like a death sentence. And if you do a bad outfit followed by like a really good one, then it's like even better. <laughs> so that's the first thing I want to just dispel is like, please don't be afraid of being an Ida. Regardless, there's going to be people who love your outfit and don't like your outfit. There's probably people in the comments who love the coordinate I'm wearing and there's probably people in the comments who hate it, but who cares? Like what it really comes down to is if you like it and you enjoy it. When it comes to black shoes with Sweet Lolita, I've seen it done quite a lot, but it's generally a reference to Alice in Wonderland, like some sort of Alice theme. Even if it's not the exact colors, I've noticed that a lot of the times it's like Wonderland themed prints that are worn with that. That's because the Disney representation of Alice she wears black shoes with a light color dress. I personally don't like this style because I really like balance in my coordinates, but that's also just my style. I wouldn't want one thing to just kind of look 
different than the rest of everything else that I'm wearing. But if that is your style and you like it, then by all means do it. I believe that there are two things you should ask yourself when you're being experimental like this. And that is, am I doing it because I have the intent to style it this way because I like how it looks? Or am I doing it because it's all I have? Both are okay, but there are certain things that you should also think about. Like, if you're doing it because you really like it, explain why you like it, and then other people might actually learn from it and be like, oh, I wanna try that too. And also explain that it's your own personal style and that you're not trying to reflect it in any certain way. And it will definitely help you not get so much backlash or criticism. This kind of goes back to my concrete video, but if you don't want criticism on your coordinate. Don't post it in places where people give criticism like Closet of Frills or Big Sisters of Lolita. Just post it on your own personal page or just wear it how you want to. Now if you're wearing something because it's all you have that's totally acceptable too. You have to remind everyone that Lolita's all start from somewhere and nobody has a perfect coordinate right away and I think that if you explain to Lolita's like I spent all of my money on my headpiece and my dress and I'm still saving up for shoes they're going to be understanding. You need to maybe think about it if you are continuing to have this problem and you always have shoes that you're not happy with that you don't like and you're spending your money in other areas. A lot of Lolita's, myself included, struggle to budget out other pieces besides dresses you get really excited and caught up in wearing fluffy dresses and buying the dresses you see a new print that you love and you often will forget to get staple pieces so if you continually forget to get shoes and you're continually unhappy with your cord because you're using shoes that that's all you have maybe you need to reassess where you're spending your money and what you're collecting. Myself personally, I always need headpieces. I feel like that's something in my wardrobe that I'm always missing. There's definitely dresses that I don't know what I'm gonna do with my hair or put on my head and that's an area that I definitely need to work in. So the only way you'll know whether you like it or not is just by trying it. So definitely if you wanna wear black shoes with an all sweet print, like try it out, see how you like it. And it's okay if you end up loving it and it's okay if you end up not liking it, but then you might learn other ways to style that you'd enjoy. Is shiny material actually bad? One of the first rules I've learned was to stay away from shiny fabrics because they look like cheap costume fabric. This makes sense because the lead is not a costume. However, I've noticed dresses being made with shinier material. Is this a case of just avoid that dress, it looks low quality, or does it depend on the situation or dress? This definitely depends on the situation and the dress because in the earlier days of Lolita, maybe the early 2010s, early 2000s, there were a lot of poor quality Lolita sites that made certain <laughs> fabrics that reflected light and just were shinier. I think that some of this goes back to the cotton versus satin polyester debate. A lot of brands used to make the majority of their pieces with cotton, so it was easy to say avoid shiny materials like satin because that was what a lot of the bad websites were using. But now a lot of brands, especially Angelic Pretty for example, also use satin in most of their pieces and they've become a bit more sheen. This is not to the level of costumey type Lolita, but I don't think it's fair to say anymore to be such a blanket statement. It's less important to worry about the shininess and more important to research the quality of the fabric, manufacturing, and making sure that you are purchasing from a reputable place. It's interesting because there's sort of rules that have like stuck around for a long time or common practices that were made out of necessity because there was less resources and then they've kind of stuck even though they're not as relevant anymore. It's an interesting thing to look at. Can you wear animal ears with non-animal prints? I know this is usually something you are not supposed to do unless there are animals, stuffed animals in your print because otherwise it comes off as Ida or an anime at convention attendee. However, I've noticed more people putting animal ears on non-related prints or solid colors. I've also seen some dresses that have rabbit or bear in their names with little to no sign of other animals in the dress itself. 
and they are paired with ears. Is the name of the dress really all you need to justify wearing them? Another thing in Lolita is when a brand does something, I feel like then it's justified to all Lolitas that you can then do it. Like, Angelic Pretty made fishnets so now no one can criticize me for wearing fishnets because AP did it. And I've noticed a lot of brands also doing this, pairing ears with dresses that aren't necessarily related to the ears. Personally, my opinion is I don't like it, but that comes down to, again, just my style being more interested in balance and theming being related. I personally only wear bear ears and I only wear them with prints that have bears in them just because I value like theming and balance and for me it would feel just off to randomly have ears. <laughs> Obviously, you know, there are other inspirations too, like you may want to replicate Kumakumia but not wear like an exact um, Kumakumia dress or bear dress and you just want to like replicate it. It's becoming more and more acceptable in the community I've noticed. I think that also the quality of the ears and the style of the ears is really important as well. Like there are cheaper costumey ones and then there are ones that are higher quality or more of an accessory and less of like a literal ear. I think it definitely depends on the situation. It also depends on your own personal style and personal comfort. I think that ears shouldn't be used as like a replacement for a headpiece. I definitely think that they should be used intentionally like you want to look like a cute bear. And also my own thing about this is I don't like when you're wearing animal ears and then you show your ears. It's like this weird pet peeve thing I have. Like cover your ears if you're gonna wear it. It doesn't make sense to have two ears. That's the whole thing. I hope that this helps clear up these very specific questions. And if any of you watching would like to elaborate on any of these more, please comment below because I would love to hear from different people. And as always, stay lovely.